Hi, my name is John Paul and I run the blog Paymentor.com. I'm happy to share my first video with you. It is about payment systems models and specifically the open loop models. In this video, we will see the two main models on which payment systems operate. Then we will focus on open loop models and consider one example to illustrate what they are. All payment systems in the world operate essentially on two types of models open loop models and closed loop models. What comes to your mind when I say payment systems? Maybe car payment systems like Visa, China Union Pay, or MasterCard. Maybe ACH systems like EBS Step 2 in Europe or Chips in the US bags or faster payments in UK, maybe switch in Sweden. Well, you may think of systems like PayPal or Bitcoin on the blockchain. All these systems and many other operate either as an open loop model or as a closed loop model. So what we are examining here is fundamental. If we understand payment systems models then we have the keys to quickly analyze and study any payment system in the world. The open loop models are by far the most widespread and the most interesting ones. It is worth spending time studying and analyzing them carefully. In the rest of this video we will focus on open loop models. So what are they? Open loop systems can be compared with a herp and spock model. The system is connected to banks, payment service providers, or similar institutions which act as intermediaries. And the banks are connected to end parties, the senders and receivers of funds. So there is no direct connection between end parties and the payment systems, as you can see on the picture. The payments are sent from an end party to its bank or PSP, then from that bank to another bank to the payment system, and finally to the receiving bank that delivers the payments to its end party customer. Open loop models yield the great advantage of allowing banks to transact with each other without direct relationships. When a bank joins the system, it can exchange transaction with all the banks that are already in the systems and vice versa. This allow open loop system to scale rapidly. The system is open in a sense that new intermediaries with their end parties can join the payment systems. The more intermediaries the payment system has, the bigger and the more effective and efficient it becomes. All end parties are in a way connected to each other through the payment systems and the intermediary banks. No need of having direct relationship to the same bank for fund transfer. Now you may wonder what is inside the payment system. How is it made up? Let's go to the next slide. Payment systems are composed of many interbank system and a central bank system in the middle. The central bank system is at the heart of the whole system and plays a vital role. The interbank systems are connected to the central bank systems as you can see. Banks and payment service providers can become participants of one or many interbank exchange systems. So it is not mandatory for a bank to join all the interbank systems. They may not become members of certain of them. But things are different when it comes to the central bank systems. Bank must become members of the central bank systems. A bank or PSP can join interbank systems or central bank systems as direct or indirect participant. We'll get back to that important notion in a future video. Just take it 
like it is for now if you are not familiar with it. Interbank transfer systems usually implement clearing mechanisms and are connected to the central bank systems for the settlement of funds. Clearing mechanisms allow to exchange payments and structure without fund transfer and perform an offset or netting of obligations according to a defined frequency, in general one or several times a day. Central bank systems implement settlement mechanisms. In some countries, they implement both clearing and settlement mechanisms, which consist in the actual movement of funds between banks' accounts. In some countries, though, the central bank systems may implement both clearing and settlement mechanisms. These two key concepts in payments will be analyzed in detail in a future video. Now let's consider one example. Let's consider core non-cash payment systems in France. I chose France because it is the country where I live. The central bank system is Target 2, which is operated by the European Central Bank. Target 2 is used for large value and urgent transfers between banks. Note that all interbank systems except ERSB are connected to Target 2. Clearing happens in these interbank systems and settlement happens in Target 2. The domestic French interbank system is called CORE, which stands for Compensation Retail. CORE is an interbank exchange system allowing banks to exchange and clear many payments instruments. List on the slide. You can ask me a question through a comment or uh, through the blog if you have any. Then we have EBA step two. It is the pan European ACH or PITCH used by the banks to exchange and clear SEPA credit transfers and SEPA direct debits. EBA step two is therefore used between French banks and between banks located in two different SEPA countries. ERSB is not a clearing system. That is why it's not connected to Target 2. It is the interbank system used for authorizations for withdrawals and payments by cars. For instant payments that are currently being implemented throughout the SEPA area, they will go through core EBA, IPS and TIPS for uh, the French banks. TIPS, not visible on the picture, is operated by the European Central Bank, so it can be considered as a central bank system. The remaining interbank system is EBA Euro 1 Step 1. It is another pan-European ACH or PITCH used for high value transfer in Euro between French banks or between banks located in two different countries in Europe. On the bottom right, main core international payment systems like Visa, Mastercard or SWIFT for correspondent banking have been highlighted. These systems are used when a transaction involves a French bank and a country outside the SEPA area or when the transaction is not in Euro currency. So that was an overview of the core systems in the country where I live. You can do the same exercise for the country where you live with the help of this slide. That will be great <laughs> and we could even write an article about it and share it with others. If you are interested I have a link below this video sending you to a form where you can request the slides I use for this presentation. Just click on the link, fill in the form and you will receive the link to download the slides in your mailbox. Then complete the slide number 8 and send it back to me. I will really appreciate that. You can use the slides also to explain these uh, key concepts to others as well. If you are interested in the slide only, no problem. You can still fill in the form and I will 
send them to you. I will finish this video with a few resources I used to prepare it. If you really want to deepen the topics of payment systems, reading one of these books will be of great help. I have provided my affiliate links below the video. Thanks for following this video. If you found it interesting and useful, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm planning to make more videos like this in the future. Next one will be about closed loop systems. I hope I will be able to publish it next week. Go to the blog and subscribe to the newsletter to get the latest information about articles and video. Thanks again and see you soon.